Without Fire, released in 1993 and is directed by Chris Columbus, who has also directed such films, dear, like Home Alone, Home Alone 2 Lost in New York, Stepmom, Bicentennialman, and the first two Harry Potter films. Ooh, how lovely. And this film is starring the hilarious Robin Williams, Sally Field, who that strapping on man Pierce Brosnan, Harvey Firestein, and Robert Brosky. Oh, how lovely. And I think I'm going to ditch the accent because it's not really working. I'm trying my best. I put on the face mask, damn it. But we're talking about Mrs. Doubtfire today because it was a PayPal recommendation and donation from one of my longtime contributors and supporters of this channel, Dr. Camp. You strike again with an amazing movie. This is one of my favorites that I watched when I was a kid. And if any of you want to be like Dr. Camp and help support me and contribute to this channel, you can hit the PayPal link that is on the homepage of my YouTube channel. And whatever size donation that you want to send me, you can also attach your movie recommendation with that. And if you do, I will watch it, review it, and give you a shout out just like what I did with Dr. Camp here. And like I said, this is one of my favorites growing up. And as a kid, I always thought this was a hilarious comedy. As an adult though, and as someone that has actually gone through seeing their parents divorce, this is definitely more of a drama. This is not as funny as I remember it being. Daniel and Miranda Hillard had recently filed for divorce. The problem, though, is that Miranda has been granted sole custody of the kids until Daniel is able to get his life back on track. With Daniel saying that he can't go a single day without seeing his children, he comes up with a scheme to infiltrate the household as an elderly housekeeper so that he can always be with his children but also get some inside scoops on their relationship. So Daniel goes through the process of feeling like he is in the right and being in in love with this woman and then going through the terrible process of going through a divorce but then in this whole process of becoming Mrs. Doubtfire becoming the housekeeper you see him grow as a person and grow as an adult he starts taking better care of himself he starts taking better care of his environment he actually seems like he has a drive more now that he is divorced. And plus, it's Robin Williams. That's all you needed to sell this movie to the audience. It's Robin Williams, and he's in drag. Of course, that's hilarious. I do wonder how the drag community feels, though, about this. If any of you participate in the drag community, please comment on this video. I'm interested to see how your view of this movie is, since you are part of that culture, because they lightly tackle some of the issues and it's one of the things that comes up in the climax of this movie once once he gets found out and he's appealing to the judge and the judge says no you don't get any custody at all with your kids due to the lifestyle that you have chosen and I'm like well that's that's a very offensive thing that you just said, sir. Due to his lifestyle, all he did was just put on women's clothing and some prosthetics. What's so wrong about that? I mean, yes, he did infiltrate and dupe his ex-wife into, guess, taking her money. Because she was paying Mrs. Doubtfire every week, so really, he was conning his ex-wife. So yeah, I could see that, but it just seemed like they were going with the lifestyle thing of him being in drag. And I thought that was pretty shitty of that judge to do. But God bless Robin Williams. He is just one of my favorite actors. He's one of those celebrity deaths that I feel affected everyone and everyone didn't want to hear because he was such a lovable person and he was such a hilarious person. Whenever we saw him on screen, we just immediately wanted to laugh. And I think that's the that's the trouble now with this movie is that you, you put it in expecting to laugh, but this movie is very dramatic, and it's actually a very serious subject. Take the cooing and the drag out of it, this is a very serious thing. This is a couple that is falling out of love with each other, and there are three lives that are caught in the middle of their squabble that are being affected by it, and it's a very serious event. I'm not saying it doesn't have hilarious parts, though. Robin Williams, when he's getting the prosthetics and he's doing all the impersonations, Barbara Streisand doing Fiddler on the Roof with his cousin, it's great. Which actually reminded me that this is the first time I've ever seen this movie in widescreen. When we had the VHS growing up, it was in full screen, so there is a lot of panning that happens in the full screen version because we're trying to get everything on the screen that we can see see who is there. Here it's all in widescreen, so those pans I was expecting, 
never showed up. And I know I just spat out <laughs> shaving cream because that's what's on my face right now. I think it's going away, actually. I'm very interested to see how I'm going to look at the end of this. This is one of those ideas that I had at first. It sounded good, but now as I'm sitting here in front of the lights, I don't think this is a good idea. It's probably going to look really bad, but it's fine. It's fine. We, tr we try different things here. We have fun. We have fun on this channel, damn it. Robin Williams is an absolute delight, and I think that was one of the troubling things about his life is that he was a hilarious person. He could make anyone laugh, and the idea of him being on screen in a role like this does get you wanting to get that comedy, wanting you to get that laughter. But he's also a great, serious, and dramatic actor as well, and I think we fail to realize how great of an actor he was, just like a straight actor he was. Because this is one of those roles that is disguising itself as a comedy, but it's really a dramatic piece. And that whole build to the climax at the Bridges restaurant where he's trying to go back and forth between being himself and Mrs. Doubtfire, for me watching it, it's one of the most cringe-worthy scenes to watch because I know what happens and I just want both of them to succeed. Like, I want Mrs. Doubtfire to be there for the birthday party, but I also want Daniel to get that job. And I want both of them to succeed, but they're the same person and one of them is going to fail. Turns out that, you know, Mrs. Doubtfire is the one that failed. He gets found out, but ugh, it's such a cringe-worthy scene. I hate watching it because I know what happens in the end and I don't want it to. I will say one of the unsung heroes of this film that really no one talks about, everyone talks about Robin Williams or Sally Field, but no one talks about Anne Hanny. She plays Mrs. Selner. She is one of the case workers that comes by. She checks out the apartment. She does the amazing straight face of watching Robin Williams do all these impersonations, and she doesn't react. Like that is acting. I, I don't care what happens. It's one of the best performances ever. To keep a straight face, to maintain a straight face when Robin Williams is throwing all of this comedy and all these voices at you, she's great. And she makes that scene. She makes this movie. I would say that this is the best film about divorce that has ever been produced. It can show you the heartbreak and the terrible process and the terrible things that come from a divorce, but it also shows you the great things. Sometimes, a couple needs to have that break in order for them to rediscover themselves or to find different aspects or to go off into a different career that they've always wanted to achieve. And they do a great job of showing that. There are a lot of films out there, I think, when it comes to divorce, like it's a terrible, awful thing. And yes, they do portray that in here, but they also show the good things that come from a divorce as well. And they do a great job of showing just how a divorce can affect children. And the responses that you typically get from a child going through a divorce with, with parents and seeing that. A lot of them say like, oh, it's all my fault. The son in here says it's all my fault. If I didn't have a birthday, none of this would have happened. And the truth is that no, it's not your fault. You are part of the problem, but it's not solely your fault. That's a public service announcement I can put on this movie review. If your family does divorce, please know you're not the sole reason, but you are part of the problem that has led them to the decision of getting a divorce. I'm just going to be straightforward with you on that. Mrs. Doubtfire, it's hilarious. I feel like the shaving cream on my face that I was trying to emulate with the cake frosting on, on Mrs. Doubtfire's face. I think it's failing, so I think I need to wrap up this review. Mrs. Doubtfire is a delightful drama. It is not a comedy. This is a serious drama. It's a it's a dark comedy, I guess, if we can go there. But it's a wonderful piece, and I think it's one of those films that everyone, if you're getting into movies and you're trying to become a cinephile, it's one of those movies that you need to watch. I'm gonna give Mrs. Doubtfire four out of five Blu-rays. I like it a lot. So guys, if you've seen Mrs. Doubtfire, what did you think about it? Or if you've never seen it before and you stumbled across it because of this video, then comment below let me know what you thought about it. And as always, if you like what you see here, if you like my take on movies, then hit the subscribe button to make sure you hit that bell. See you all the next time I release Max Movie Review. So guys, I will see you next time on the channel. So in the meantime, be well, be good to each other, and go watch a movie. Take care, guys. Now I gotta go get this shit off me.